All right, welcome. Today I'm going over a new product from Inkbird and it is the TH1 Plus and the TH1 Mini. So here's the Mini and here's the Plus and they are data loggers. They're gonna monitor your temperature and humidity. Uh, currently I'm using this one in my incubation and then I'm using this one to monitor a refrigerator. And uh, you access the Mini and the Plus from an app on your phone. You download it and you have the two different you can have the two different um, units here. So I'll go ahead and open one up and it'll show me a diagram of exactly how the temperature has been. So this one you can see is my incubation and it's pretty steady. It's um, just going on and off with the compressor. One thing you can see is when it gets too hot out, if your compressor just keeps going and then the temperature rises, that lets you know that your compressor is not big enough, your air conditioning compressor is not big enough, or just the environment's too hot. So I actually had some instances where the, the garage got over 100 degrees when I had my sterilizer running and the garage door is shut that the incubation couldn't keep up, the air conditioner couldn't keep up with the outside temperature. So let's say you know about sizing. Um, another thing would be like if you put too many blocks in there, if you have too many blocks that are creating too much heat, your air conditioner can't keep up with the amount of heat that the blocks are creating, so you would have to size your air conditioner appropriately. Um, so it, it monitors cycles of your compressor kicking on. You can also use it for monitoring your sterilizer run. So I just ran one recently where I ran it in one of these blocks here. And all I did was, I, when I loaded the block up, I opened it up and I shoved it in the middle of the block. That way it monitored the core temp. And, and with that, you can see how long it takes to get for the core temperature to get above 190, because that's what matters is the core temperature. It doesn't matter how long it takes the outside of the steam to get to you know, 200 Fahrenheit or whatever. What matters is that the core has to be at 290 for at least 10 hours for it to sterilize properly. So what I did was I took some RTV and I made a little, I encapsulated the, the probe you can see there. So without that, I wouldn't trust it very long. I would probably say a couple cycles and the steam will get in there. So I'll show you how to do that. What you do is you take the, the probe, okay? And you can see it's, it's metal and then they just have it kind of crimped on this rubber right here. So it's not the most waterproof connection. Um, and what we'll do is just take a little bit of RTV, get it at Napa or O'Reilly's, any auto shop, uh, silicone sealant, this is Permatex Ultra Black gasket maker, and you just shove the guy in there, okay, get it past where the, all the rubber is, and then as you pull it, squeeze it, and now it's kind of given an extrusion of RTV around the outside of the probe. And now we have a nice encapsulated probe, so it can be buried in things, it can go into water, you don't have to worry about it, it um, faulting out in time. So with that, uh, that's done. Showed you guys how to do that. And uh, let's go back to the TH1 Plus. So TH1 Plus, it has a pretty long, like six foot uh, extension cord for the, the probe. It also is detachable, okay? Now that's nice because if you ever have to like fish it through something, you can unplug it, fish it through, and then hook it up. You don't have to like dangle it around or whatever. Um, another thing is if, if this ever conks out on you, you can replace it. A lot of these other controllers say these older Inkbird temperature controllers, if the probe goes bad on you, it's wired in. You can't just throw it, throw a new one in there. You gotta throw it out or like manually wire in a new probe. So a uh, big, big bonus that it's detachable. Um, it does have a humidity sensor on it. However, I probably wouldn't put this in your fruiting room for very long because I wouldn't, I wouldn't imagine it would last very long in my experience. Maybe if you kept it very high and dry, you wouldn't want it to ever get condensate because that's what it will kill electronic components. Um, especially since it has, you know, a, a, a whole layer and it has batteries that can get wet on the backside. It's not exactly waterproof. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend putting this in your fruiting room. Um, so what I, I use this for was the incubation. Um, also my, my cold storage refrigerator. I could show you how you can see when the, um, the temperature went off. Okay, so it was this one, oh no, it was this one. So what I was, I was having issues with my cold storage. I have a, a little mini fridge down here, this little box. So I'm, I'm storing Petri dishes in it and I noticed that they were sweating out really bad. You can see right here, they're still doing it. So it was like probably a half a cup of water one time at the bottom and I was like, what is going on? And what it is, is the fridge, the controller on it, it jumps around a lot. 
it, it goes, it's like a 10 degree, 10 degree swing, and you can see it right here. So 42 to 51 is that swing. And that's too much because what's happening is it's, it's heating and cooling, heating and cooling. It's putting, pushing all the moisture out of the agar. So I gotta, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn that thing all the way down to where it's like the coldest setting. And I'm gonna put it on this and have it hold it like 36 or 34. And it'll kick the compressor on more often, but it'll maintain a, a more narrow width of, of temperature control. So these Inkbird controllers or the Inkbird uh, monitors, they're good for that. They're good for seeing what's going on, seeing how often uh, a compressor is kicking on, seeing how long it takes for your, your drum to get to, to sterilization cycle. And then once you figure it out, you don't really need it anymore. It's not like something you need to keep, keep on using. Um, the, the Mini, this thing's okay. It's, ch it's a lot cheaper. It's like half the price of the big one, of the Plus, but there's no display on it. And the major drawback is that little tiny battery that only lasts about a month and a half. So I'd probably, if I was, if I was only gonna buy one of these, I would buy this one, much more capable. It has the, the temperature on it. It has normal AAA batteries, which are much more easy to get your hands on than some of those little flat batteries. And the battery life is way, way longer. This one's, uh, this is five weeks old. This one's already at 20% battery life. This one's still at 60%. So you're gonna get two months, maybe three months battery life out of this one and maybe seven weeks out of these guys. So uh, yeah, that being said, pretty cool new product. Uh, you can log your sterilization cycle. You can log air conditioning, incubation, all that kind of stuff. Kind of see what the heck's going on. Um, one thing that you can actually use it for in the long term, my buddy TR Davis was saying that he needs to log his, his cold storage for like, I guess, insurance reasons or whatever. So you can put one in your fridge and make sure that your produce is staying at the right temperature and you can have the log to show in case if something happens, you know, you, could, you know, food sickness, whatever, like, well, at least I was storing it at the right temperatures. So um, yeah, hopefully you like that video. Uh, I'll put the link below to the product and also my kit page where I have other products that I recommend for mushroom cultivation. And uh, I hope you like this one. Make sure you give it a thumbs up and keep on mushrooming. Take it easy.